create a subtitle and set the use cases static text. Add a condition on the paragraph element having the query with ID 15 set, which checks if the extract use case external variable has the own value set. Set the heading 3 style to the subtitle text element. Under the subtitle, add a new paragraph from the context menu or palette view and drop the use case query from the query 15 inside the paragraph. Inside this paragraph, insert a new paragraph and a container, in which we will extract the use case names, the diagrams and the contain elements. In order to extract the use case name, make use of the name element from the use case query. Drag and drop it into the paragraph and choose the use as value option. Under the use case name extraction, create two containers. In the root container of the two created containers, set the diagram verify abstract diagram query under the query 16 to check if the use case contains any diagrams. In the first container, set the pictures picture query under the query 17 in order to be able to use the path attribute for the use case diagram extraction. Insert three paragraph elements. In the first one, the name of the diagram will be displayed. The second paragraph will be used to extract the diagram from the use cases. The third paragraph will contain the figure caption of the diagram. In the first paragraph, insert a text element. Set its value to a data expression referring to the label attribute from the query 17. In the second paragraph, insert an image element and set a data expression element and its value referring the path attribute from the query 18. The third paragraph element will contain the figure caption element. Set its value to a script expression which will display the name of the figure using the name attribute from the 17 query and the static text figure. Set the paragraph alignment property of the last paragraph element to center. On the second container from the query 17, we will set a condition which verifies if the extract model element's external variable has the own value set.
add a static text element with contained element static text as value. Set the heading style for subtitles text. For the use case name, set heading for style. For the abstract diagram label, set heading 5 style. And for the contained element, set the heading 6 style. Under the contained element subtitle, create a container and set the contain elements query under the query 17. Insert a paragraph inside the container element. Also, add a table with two rows and two cells in the last created paragraph element. Define the table header by adding a text element in each cell from the first row from the table. For each created text element, set a static text representing the information which will be extracted in the table element. On the second row, set the model element query under the query 19 in order to gain access to the label and user define meta class attributes. Insert a text element in both cells from the second row. Set the text in the first cell to a data expression referring the label attribute from query 20. For the second text element, set a data expression referring the user meta class attribute from the query 20. In the next section, we will extract the sequence diagrams in the same way we did for the use case. To simplify the work, copy the paragraph which has the query 16 set and paste it under it. Create a condition on the last added paragraph which checks if the extract sequence diagram's external variable has the on value set. The next step is to assign the queries. Set the sequence diagrams query under the query 10 to the copied paragraph. Set the sequence diagram static text for the label text element. Set the sequence diagram query on the container element under the query 21. The name of the sequence diagram is obtained by extracting the label attribute from the query 23. On the paragraph element that holds the image element, drop the picture's picture from the query 23 and set the path attribute for image element value.
set the value for the figure caption element using the name attribute and the figure static text in the script expression editor. The table will also contain the name and type of the contained elements. From Rhapsody Schema, drag the Contain Elements query under the Query 23 and drop it in the container element. In order to extract the contained elements in the second row of the table, the model element query from the Query 25 must be set on the second row of the table. Now you can set the values for the text elements from the cells using the label and the user-defined meta class attributes. Set the font bold property to true for both texts from the first row of both table elements. Assign the MP content master page to the table of contents element. Switch to the master page content tab. Select the first cell from the first row of the table element and set the cell width to 300. Set the cell alignment property value for the second cell of the first row to center right value. Set the bold property to true for both text elements of the first row. Save the template and publish the documents to see if any modifications are necessary. Open the Microsoft Word output document. Execute the update field Microsoft Word action in order to make the table of contents and table of figures visible. Observe that all elements are extracted as planned. More videos, tutorials and information about Rational Publishing Engine can be found on www.reportingarena.com.